Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for uh, for coming on time, and uh, hopefully you've followed up your heavy lunch with a coffee or something to keep you perked up here. Um, this is the developer agility track, so stick with us for the rest of the afternoon to hear stories directly from customers and end users about how they've developed their solution on top of Couchbase. And uh, we have uh, J Jason from cars.com here to talk about what they've been doing. Thanks, Jason. Thank you. Can everyone hear okay? Okay, good. All right, good. Um, thanks, everyone, uh, for being here. I hope you're having a good conference so far. My name is Jason Williams. I'm an enterprise architect with uh, cars.com. And uh, I'm here to just talk to you all a little bit today about what we've been doing with Couchbase, what's that's what that's enabled us to do. And uh, we're excited to be able to tell that story uh, to you guys. So just a little bit about us. Uh, our goal, our mission, really is to be the leading decision engine that helps people buy a car, right? I'm not gonna really uh, kind of drain this whole slide. Uh, not only buy their car, but really just that continuous ownership cycle of a car, everything from having your car serviced, um, looking for new cars, uh, et cetera. Um, and in fact, if you look at cars from a, uh, from a consumer perspective, you're gonna kind of see these three interlocking uh, large families of products. Um, over, over to the right, which if you're familiar with our, our website at all, uh, that's probably the first thing you think of is really car shopping. So the, the car shopping experience, either um, if you're looking for a new car, used car, et cetera. Um, moving to the middle, uh, sell and trade. Again, that ownership cycle, wanting to make it possible for um, not only for you to go and buy a car, but also to sell a car or do a trade-in. And then also um, service and repair, which is, as we all know, is, is kind of part of life if you're a car owner. Um, so figuring out how to, how to just make all three of these processes as, as good as they can be. And really, really, in order to do that, we have to bring in uh, a large variety of data, uh, many different data sources, uh, many different shapes of data and be able to make sense of all of that, be able to do that very quickly, um, be able to do that with a great deal of agility and then get that out to our uh, consumers and partners. Um, so if you think about cars from an architecture perspective, uh, cars.com that is, it's really just a very large data processing engine uh, with uh, lots of acquisition, lots of distribution. So, uh, you know, I'll give you an example. If, if you kind of take a look through this uh, over on the left, uh, you'll see our various uh, sources of data uh, coming in various web APIs, uh, files, other mobile data sources. Um, and that represents a lot of different data entities that we bring in. Uh, one, one of those core entities is, of course, our listings. Uh, that's what we call our classified ad for our vehicles. But um, that also extends to uh, activity logging, a uh, large amount of media that we bring in uh, describing all these vehicles, and even a lot of um, internally generated content. Uh, Cars um, has a background as a, a publishing company, originally owned by five of the largest uh, news conglomerates. And so we, from that, we have a large amount of editorial staff that always writes a lot of, a lot of content that needs to be integrated with all the listings data. In the middle, we've got the storage. And then, of course, on the right, we've got the distribution of all of this data out through um, kind of our most predominant uh, channel, our cars.com channel, but then also through our mobile application, uh, through various data syndication channels to partners such as uh, our, our OEMs, for example. There in the middle, we've got all of the storage, and that's really where some of our uh, challenges uh, were, were really existing a couple of years ago, um, which led us to look at Couchbase. So um, the majority of our platform at that time was, was running on a uh, single, very monolithic database platform, which had become, you know, in my words, just kind of a little too big to fail, a little difficult to upgrade. And uh, that, that's kind of what we're going to talk about today is um, some of the new flexibility that we were looking at, which, which led us to do something different. So um, I'll kind of kind of talk about our, our journey with, with Couchbase uh, a little bit. In, in a nutshell, it really goes um, from just taking a step back and realizing that, you know, we did have some challenges and opportunities, um, kind of figuring out what were the use cases around those, uh, doing a vendor selection and an eventual launch initial launch, and then uh, we'll, we'll kind of talk a little bit about what we're looking ahead to doing today. I think you guys can all guess kind of 
what happened in the vendor selection phase. But um, we'll kind of dig into that a little bit. So um, as an enterprise architect, um, kind of what were the challenges that we were looking at and, and what were we up against? So kind of from a business point standpoint, it was being able to quickly onboard new data. Right, I didn't, if I needed a new data point for a service and repair product or even to add an additional feature to a vehicle, I didn't want that to be a, a three to six month process with uh, a lot of data modeling, changing schemas everywhere, potentially evolving uh, a lot of data. Really, I wanted to uh, just be able to quickly onboard that new data. And um, once upon a time, I was a data modeler and I got really good at schema evolutions, right? So kind of had to learn to leave a little bit of, of the, uh, the taste for that behind because it, it just takes too long to do. Um, and, and it's just not necessary. So right, quickly onboard that data, um, enable my business to quickly release a new product to cut down a release cycle into you know, weeks versus months. Um, and really start small and iterate. I didn't want to have to figure out what was going to be the perfect data model for all time, because one, you never really find that. So starting small and iterating and really just failing fast and learning. You know, the, the business wants to be able to get something out there, get it tested, uh, react very quickly to that, right? You guys, this is something that all, all of you know. And then from an architecture point of view, I really just needed a way to have uh, very flexible data. Um, and when I, when I kind of take a step back from all of my ERDs, it's very easy just to see sort of various documents emerging over here, you know, like, okay, this is a dealer, this is a vehicle, and do I really need to normalize all of that out in, in the way that I have been doing, uh, especially given that the vast majority of activity on my site is reads. Right, so I need to fetch a vehicle and display it. I need to fetch all the data about a de vehicle, a dealer rather, and display it. So I needed that really flexible data. I needed some cost-effective uh, scalability. Um, the other choices that I had prior to using um, Couchbase was to um, buy a whole bunch more new hardware, figure out what that was gonna need to look like for the next five years, do a really large planning cycle with that. I hope I got it right. Um, probably over budget a little bit, right? Because uh, that's what you have to do. Um, so I needed a way to just be able to quickly uh, scale something up, right? I needed fast data access. I needed, um, in a sense, I didn't want to have to do a join across 20 tables to display a dealer. I really wanted to be able to just quickly get all of that data in one chunk. And I wanted to have some different caching opportunities that would be resident within the database without having to look at a completely separate caching solution. Finally, um, I needed uh, my next solution to be uh, very much aligned to my company's cloud strategy and uh, to our microservices strategy. The car's journey over the last um, three, four, five years has been very much down uh, the microservices path and we've done a really fantastic job of teasing out all of our existing applications into fairly fine-grained services. Uh, the last mile is really in the database because all of the services are still, for the most part, um, back-ended by one really large database, right? So and we've begun to change that um, use, using Couchbase. So it was important to us that we would be able to easily evolve that strategy. For instance, just stand up a, ver a new database very easily or a new bucket, uh, just kind of get started with that and then know that we would have a clear path uh, to the cloud. So what were the uh, initial use cases that we envisioned? Um, as part of our uh, research and justifying this project, um, we came up with uh, these five use cases. The first was really the, the bread and butter of our business, our vehicle listings. Um, right now, uh, I'm pleased to say that we've gotten a, some small part of those listings into Couchbase, and we're excited to be able to continue to build on that. The other one is um, being able to deliver um, metrics out to um, our consumers and partners. Um, we have a, a current dealer reporting solution. Um, we're looking towards uh, really evolving that and being able to take more of those metrics and even make them available to consumers. For example, being able to take all of the vehicle prices for a given vehicle in, different, in a given market and be able to contextualize that a little bit and have a really easy way to display that back out. Our, our user profile, 
Um, I've, we've, we've heard many instances of, of talking about user profile. Uh, it's just a, a, a perfect fit uh, for, for a document database. Um, the variability in our user profile is kind of interesting for us. Um, as with any company, we want to know as much about our users as we can, but it's hard to get some of that information. And I'll give you an example of um, why a really uh, a database that, that works with a very variable structure is really helpful there. We're thinking of, of launching a new product that we call My Garage, which would enable any user of the site to go in and say, oh, I have these two vehicles or these three vehicles. Um, the way that we're the way that we're envisioning that is being able to then deliver things like recall information, recall alerts, service alerts, um, opportunities to maybe trade up, fix or flip, that kind of thing. Um, but I don't really know right how much detail any one of us, any one person is going to give me about their vehicle. Somebody might just want to tell me, "Hey, I've got a, I've got a 2012 Ford truck," but somebody else might be willing to give me. Oh, the mileage, the VIN, um, last time they had it serviced, so I need something that would just very flexibly adapt to collecting really as little or as, or as much as, as I might be able to get. The uh, other use case that we looked at was, was our product data. So all of our master data that describes kind of from a product point of view, what are all the vehicles available for sale, what are the features of those vehicles, and so forth. And then we'll talk a little bit about uh, this last one here, um, pricing data. Which it was really just kind of a subset of, of this product data. So, so these were kind of some of the original use cases that we knew would, would just really be a good fit uh, for document database. And those are the ones that uh, we went with in terms of, of moving forward. So vendor selection process. Um, this is just a really... Uh, good uh, process for us. Um, I think anyone could kind of take this template and really pick it up and follow it. Uh, we did just a, a ton of initial research on our own, right? So doing some smaller POCs, um, looking at websites such as nosql.org, um, any, anything else we could kind of get our hands on to learn this space. Um, I come from a really strong relational background. So does you know pretty much everybody in my company. We're a really big uh, Oracle shop. Tons of PL SQL expertise. Um, so this this initial phase was just something that was really good for us to go through to just really get the the comfort level with uh, something new. Um, like I said, we did the POCs. Um, again, we learned a lot there, and no substitute for just kind of installing things, trying it out. And then uh, finally, we had. Um, just proposals and demos from uh, five different solution vendors. So that really helped us to just get a really good lay of the land, understand kind of similarities and differences uh, kind of between some of these products. Um, you know, we, you guys all know what happened in the end, right? Um, so um, we did choose Couchbase, so we've been really, really happy with that choice. Um, and fi finally, we, uh, we did a number of analyst conversations as well. So kind of the, the Gartner conversations, Forrester conversations, which just gave us a really good comfort level uh, for going forward. So um, kind of talk to you a little bit about uh, why, why did we end up choosing Couchbase, right? Um, part of it was just the uh, strength of the features and functions. Um, for one, uh, we really, really liked Nickel uh, quite a bit. Um, We've got kind of mixed use cases. Sometimes we need to use things as key value. Sometimes we do need to do some introspection of the documents. So we wanted a way to very easily just fetch a subset of a document or to be able to retrieve a document by something that's uh, not, not the key, basically. So we were really impressed with that. The uh, secondary indexes kind of go, go hand in hand with what I just said. That was, that was something that was really important to us. And uh, fi finally, the map reduced views. Um, we knew that we needed a way to, to iterate over all of these documents and, and produce aggregate views of them, to uh, produce other views of them, and we wanted a product that would do that for us out of the box without having to write um, another layer on top of the data to figure out how to do those aggregations, listen for events which would indicate changes to the underlying data, and, and keep up with all of that. So those are just a couple of the uh, features and functions that really impressed us. Um, on the architecture side, 
uh, we really liked the simplicity um, along with some of the options. So for example, we really liked that it was, that it was peer to peer, um, no central node that we would have to worry about going down or anything like that. Um, we liked that the, at least to start with, all of the nodes are basically the same. Uh, you've got them running the same services on them. Just makes it really easy to set up and understand. Um, but we also liked the option, and we'll talk about this a little bit, to, um, to kind of change things up a little later and go more to the multi-dimensional scaling model. Um, so that was, that was kind of some of the architecture pieces. And then, um, you know, on the performance side, we really liked the memory first architecture. That was important to us. We wanted the system to be very, very fast. Um, also in terms of, of HA, of course, you've got all the redundancy in there. And then um, the XDCR was, of course, something that, that we would need from, um, from a, a DR point of view. And we, we liked it that that was just built in uh, right out of the box. We didn't have to buy another product to implement a DR solution. And um, it's also, it was also good for us that um, the mechanism behind uh, the XDCR is something that's also driving kind of all of the other data change processes within the cluster, so the replication and so forth. So um, that gave us a real sense of confidence around that that, that was going to be really strong for us. Um, we talked about the cloud and, and so a strategy a little bit, but um, again, just, just the really easy uh, deployments, both on-prem and off-prem. We're running a mix of, of uh, workloads um, in both on-premise and cloud, so we've got a lot of uh, dev deployed to the cloud, Couchbase cluster in the cloud. Um, for all of our production workload that is still currently on-premise, we're looking at expanding that out to AWS as well. Um, and again, just the alignment with the uh, services. So um, talk about the, uh, just kind of our first use case. So just to, just to kind of rewind a little bit, I, I showed you that slide of about five use cases where we had envisioned, okay, kind of here's the master plan and here's what we're gonna do. And we're still kind of working through that. Um, interestingly enough, um, we, got, we got the product in place, got it, got it um, set up and then we had a hackathon. And another team said, oh, okay, I really want to come and do this. I want to solve this little problem. Couchbase is the perfect fit. So it's kind of, kind of an interesting um, lesson as an enterprise architect, right? You kind of think you've got it all figured out and you've got your first use cases and then, then um, you kind of get something out there that's easy to use and, and uh, people kind of start immediately taking advantage of it. So it was really nice to see. But um, what were we wanting to do, right? So we wanted to get something stood up deployed with um, you know, minimal risk. I didn't want to try you know, in two months to kind of move the entire company over, right? Um, so minimal risk. Um, I really wanted visible business value from, from the get-go. Um, that, that was really important to us. That's becoming more and more important to be able to justify everything in terms of the business value. Um, we wanted to just really get in there and learn and help other people learn and really just kind of accelerate um, NoSQL development there at CARS. And we kind of wanted to just kind of have a good time. So uh, we'll kind of talk about how we did that in that with that first use case, which um, again, emerged from a hackathon. And so that, that was really, really nice. Um, we, did, we did what we called our vehicle listing uh, demand metrics. So we'll talk about that a little bit. So this, this is our, what we call our VDP, or our vehicle details page. This is the page that you arrive at after you've done a search for vehicles and you've kind of looked through those search results and then you want more details on a specific vehicle. What we needed to do was additionally create a little more uh, demand around our vehicles. And you know, the guys in this hackathon said, well, you know, we, we have this activity logging system, right? And we just spent all this time in the last six months at the, at the time of this hackathon, making this real time. We, we stood up a Hadoop cluster, we're bringing in data via Kafka, we're processing it in Spark, and that's all going into reports, right, that no one else is, none of our consumers are seeing. So I thought, well, what if we could expose that data and, and create some demand around the vehicles? So, for example, on this VDP, now I've got a number of times that this car has been viewed, a number of times that that someone has submitted a lead on it, in this case it's one, and the number of times that someone has uh, saved it to their favorites. So that was kind of a really, really big win for us. It was immediate business value. It was really easy to get in and do. I think our hackathons last about four or five days. 
so we got this we got this kind of pushed out there really really fast right so this is what it looks like um, calls to the VDP um, initiate the act, the activity logging which is an internal system it's uh, Java based uh, we take we take that event we stream it into Kafka we pull that into our Hadoop cluster where we have a series of uh, Spark jobs running. So we, we tabulate some, some statistics on the page views, et cetera, on this page. Uh, we use the Couchbase Spark connector to then basically perform an insert operation or a create operation into Couchbase. Uh, well, create or update, depending on, on uh, some circumstances. Um, we're making use of the Couchbase counters. So this is just constantly tabulating in near real time these, these few statistics on this web page. And um, then those are made back available to um, our vehicle detail API. So this has just been um, a tremendous initial first success for us. Um, we were able to do this pretty quickly and we were all pretty happy about that. Next use case is um, what we call unpacking the price. And we've spent a lot of, of time and effort wanting to be a lot more uh, price transparent uh, for, our, for our consumers. So there's all kinds of vehicles out there. They've got all types of features on them. And uh, this is data that we make available. But um, you know, kind of at the end of the day, the big question is, well, OK, so, so my, my vehicle has got a backup camera, right? Or you know, I, I've got um, assisted cruise control. But what exactly is that doing to the price of my vehicle? And, and why is this vehicle maybe listed at a higher or lower price than, than some other vehicle? Um, so there, there's a lot of work going on in this area, but one very quick win that we had was we were able to, to acquire uh, some of this data from our, our data provider who has access to this data from the OEMs. So for example, um, I've got here a, a starting MSRP and then, then on this specific make, model, year, trim, or instance of a vehicle product, I can tell you what are, what are these various features on this vehicle that are contributing to the price. So things like it's got kind of a sport trim. It's got some different engine specs. Um, we've got, got leather bucket seats, right? Um, kind of all contributing to this price. Um, nice thing about this, again, was it was really very easy for us to do. Kind of Kind of easy and fast. So... What we do is um, we call our partner API, right? Uh, we get we get a, a pretty large, bulky document back from them um, as a SOAP XML document. So that gives us a, a ton of information on this vehicle. We do some cleansing, massage that data, uh, turn it into a JSON document, which we can insert into Couchbase. And then um, our vehicle details API is, is issuing a nickel query to then just pull out this small subset of this vehicle product document very quickly, and then um, display that on our vehicle details page. So that's, that's been kind of yet another, another pretty easy, easy win for us. I think this was, this was done in a couple of weeks versus what I'm sure would have been, you know, two, three, four months worth of kind of data modeling, schema evolution, and so forth. So we're, we're uh, pretty happy about that one too. Um, so just to kind of summarize and kind of look ahead, you know, we've we've talked a little bit about um, you know schema lists and so forth and being able to get things done quickly. Um, that's been very powerful powerful for us, right? Um, it doesn't mean that the data doesn't have a schema, right? So so that's still very important. Um, we still have a very active data modeling community who has just kind of been able to take on a bit of a new role, working a little more hand in glove uh, with our development and architecture community. Um, so that's been really exciting for us. So kind of that experience there, um, just learning the data, learning the basics and getting up and running was just really, really easy. Uh, one, one thing that we did as part of our process um, when we purchased our licenses, we went ahead and purchased a, a lot of uh, training as well. So we had on-site uh, nickel training, on-site DBA training, and then we sent a, we sent a small handful of people off to various other uh, local trainings that Couchbase had. That was really, really key to our success, and I, I just can't really emphasize, um, in my opinion, of just what a good idea that is. It's, it's a really, really small investment, uh, in my opinion, to just really bootstrap a team and, and kind of get people going. So that, that was really good for us. Um, 
so we got things going up and up and running, yeah, pretty easy. Um, the the automatic in memory caching really simplified things for us. Uh, we we do use um, another caching solution in house. Um, it's very powerful, but some of some of the feedback on that is that it it's sometimes can just be a little more complicated than people uh, really want it to be. So this was very very nice in that we could set up the database and then to, depending on how we wanted to tune the working set and so forth, we could pretty much have kind of cash uh, right out of the box uh, with that. So that was really powerful for us. Um, as we said earlier, just the, the, single, the single node architecture just really simplified the deployment. We didn't have to think about immediately how many index nodes we needed versus how many data nodes we needed and so forth. Uh, we know that's gonna be important for us, but that's something um, that, that we really just kinda wanna grow into as the system evolves a little bit without having to make some of those decisions up front, which, again, would have been based on somewhat on conjecture. Um, so we would have had to kind of change them anyway, right? So it was nice that we didn't have to do that. Nickel has just been very, very pow powerful for us. We have uh, an, an army of, of uh, data developers. That's what we call the role at cars.com. Um, all SQL experts, every one of our... Um, Autonomous pods has one or two data developers on that pod. Um, so it's not been too far of a stretch for them to start kind of looking at Nickel from SQL. And um, that's been good for us. And I think it also gave everyone just uh, a really good comfort level uh, with the platform to know that, okay, there's this SQL-like language that I know and love that I can, that I can easily kind of use to get at this data. Um, so that was good for us. The, um, you know, the, the SDK uh, was very easy to, to, to use, gets going very quickly. Um, just, you know, the timeout and the durability options is very interesting for us. A, a lot of our data does expire uh, as listings come onto the site. You know, they're, they're, they stay there for some time and then eventually they're sold. Um, so we have a lot of processes in place to, to kind of actively maintain that data and, and, and kind of keep keep the operational system, systems engagement lean and mean. So that's something we want to kind of look at with these time to lives a little bit more. And then, um, you know, fi finally our whole experience, we've been in production now for, I forget the exact dates, but it, it's something longer than one year and, and something less than two. Um, we've, we've made some really interesting changes in the organization since then. Um, um, I've really wanted to make sure that, that our Couchbase and NoSQL efforts were very much community driven. So um, we've really put together kind of a cross-functional team of, of architects and devs and DBAs and, and other folks. And we're having regular touch points with Couchbase. Um, we're doing that about uh, two times a year. We just, we just had the first one. And um, that, that's been really good. What we had to recognize was that kind of as a centralized, rather small enterprise architecture group, we were not really going to be able to learn everything there was, right, about NoSQL and Couchbase and kind of polish this beautiful body of knowledge and then kind of piece it and, and, and kind of parcel it out. We really just had to create a community around it and uh, have everybody contribute, get in there and roll up his or her sleeves and um, kind of move forward together. So that's been really good. And we've had a lot of support um, along that path as we've moved on. So um, that kind of wraps up kind of what we've done so far. I would say that uh, you know, the, the key areas of, of kind of future interest for us is, is the multidimensional scaling piece. So we've got some queries now that have become a little more complex. They're beginning to take a little more time. So this is just a perfect time uh, for us to uh, begin looking at kind of separating out some of the services that are running on the different nodes. So I'm looking forward to that. We've got a use case uh, for our mobile apps that we want to look at uh, Couchbase Mobile, uh, predominantly around keeping those applications synchronized with, with all of the product master data that, that essentially drives uh, menu-driven browsing and searching. Right? We've got a bit of a homegrown mechanism right now for refreshing all of that product data to the, to the mobile apps, and we're looking at having something that's just a little more, a little more native for us for doing that. And then uh, finally, um, for cloud, we uh, mentioned earlier that um, 
our initial deployments right now um, is a mix of, of on-prem. On all, all production is on-prem. Um, development is currently in the cloud. And we're looking at expanding that footprint out in the cloud for AWS. So as we move more and more services from, from on-prem to cloud, looking at those being much more uh, smaller, finely grained, kind of one-to-one -one ratio between database and service, looking at putting those out in AWS. And I think that'll be a really good fit for us there. So that's, that's everything. I hope you guys have uh, enjoyed the talk and we can take a few questions if there are any. Yes, sir. So we've we've done we've done some of that. Um, all of the all of the work that we have in in Couchbase now is something that had we not gotten NoSQL would have been normalized out. Um, it's not been that much of a of a leap for us. I would say just it's, some of the challenges architecturally have been more in how do you maintain kind of a body of knowledge around what data you have. Um, when you don't really have a data model that you can easily kind of pull up and, and say, okay, this is the model and these are the entities and relationships. Um, it can just be more of a, a mindset change more than anything else. The other thing that, that we've kind of been working through a little bit is our data modeling function is centralized. So really nothing went into the database unless we knew about it first, right? But now I've got product teams kind of creating things, right, which is really good because that's what they need to do. But um, sometimes in, in that regard, data governance can be a little bit kind of more of a discovery piece, um, which is, it's, it's interesting. We, we've been looking at some ways to figure out, well, how do we, how can we kind of profile uh, the data that's going into Couchbase? I saw in the latest release, there's kind of some of the automatic profiling, which I'm excited about. Um, but that really goes back to that kind of community-driven approach that uh, that we've really had had to adopt. Does that does that get to yeah, your question? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I understand it. You know, it's as coming from a data modeling background, I was kind of accustomed to being in a, in a sense a gatekeeper, right? Okay, well, what's what's going to go into the database? But um, it, it's really just allowed us to move so much faster. Um, we've had to just. Cult, cultivate this community, and there's a lot of trust involved there. And uh, but it's it's been working really well for us. Other question? Yes. How uh, how's stability been in production? And uh, is there any lessons learned from any uh, you know, production incidents? Or so question is how stability been in production, and any lessons learned um, with with regards to production operations. Stability has been fine. There, there's really been no issue there. Um, we've started out with a fairly small deployment. I don't have all of the numbers at the, at the ready in terms of numbers of documents. Um, we started out with five nodes. Um, we're looking to grow more of that. We've had zero issues uh, with, 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 with regards to stability. So we've been really happy there. We have begun to see uh, some, some query times kind of tick up a little bit as we've added um, more documents and more workload. Um, but it, it, right now, it's not a cause for concern. It's just more kind of proactively looking at it and making sure we're, we're ready to tune it. So, yes? Have you had to do any kind of significant schema upgrades on your JSON documents? We've not had to do anything like that yet. Um, the question was, have we had to do any significant schema upgrades? Uh, the answer is no. We've not had to do anything like that yet. Um, I'm, I'm sure that we will at some point. Um, my hope is that we can use some of the nickel functions such as uh, is missing, is not missing, and, and hopefully have the applications be able to, to bridge that divide and, and be able to have kind of knowledge of multiple versions of the objects. But I'm sure that at some point we will have to cross that bridge because as time goes on, you don't want your application being uh, having to be aware of 10 previous versions of a document. Um, so we'll, we'll cross that bridge at some point. And then, the, uh, the cluster you had up there uh, ingesting the Glitch 
stream data, the click counts. Mm -hmm. I do not have those numbers with me. Um, I get about 30 million page views a month um, overall. So um, for us, it's, it's, it's a fairly significant number, um, especially this, since this was our first really real-time use case of getting data back out to the glass real-time. Um, so we've been, we've been really happy with that. Um, question? We are on 4.6. Mm -hmm. So um, every year, Touchbase can be really reused some bug issues that come up. We currently are with Touchbase, and we see a lot. You said you've been at a very stable environment. Haven't you had any of the bug issues on your environment? So question is, what version are we on, which is 4.6, and have we had any experience hitting any of the bugs that would have been fixed in, say, 4.5. Um, we really have not. Um, the, only, you know, the only kind of untoward thing that's happened for us is, is one of our DBAs accidentally performed an upgrade. Um, but that wasn't really uh, related to any, any bug or anything like that. Yeah. We've, we've not. Um, So, well, um, we have not experienced any significant issue. Um, if, our, if our DBA was here, who I work with very closely, I'm sure he could kind of get into the details of, of something. Um, you know, we have had to call on Couchbase a couple of times with questions, um, but there's never been anything that's resulted in, in a production outage for us um, or any degradation of service for us. Sorry, I don't have a no war story for you. But, uh, oh, fingers crossed, right? Other questions? Okay, yeah. So it's been a little while uh, since we did the evaluation. Um, we typically don't talk about what, what we looked at and did not pick. We, we kind of tend to focus on what we chose. Um, if anybody wants to kind of catch me afterwards offline, I'm, I'm kind of happy to share uh, some of the other things that we looked at. Go in the back. You mentioned that you had some both on prem and uh, in the cloud to be with Couchbase. Any uh, issues with learning that as far as integrating or aggregating that information? So, question it was just kind of reiterating that we both had on premise and uh, cloud. Deployments and do we have do, have we had any challenges with with integrating across on prem and cloud? Um, that's not something we've had to do yet. Um, I'm sure that sure that we will. Um, the production application that we want to go next with in the cloud is is really kind of the one of the first instances where we've we we've, we've had to say okay, all of production is on premise. And now we're going to take this small piece and put it out to the cloud. So we're, we're essentially managing that in the services tier to effectively do a join, right? So I've, I've got this page, and this service is retrieving this data from the cloud. These other services are retrieving from an on-premise on data source. And it will be up to them to, um, to do that aggregation um, in real time. We, we haven't had any situations yet where we've purposefully made data redundant across on-premise and cloud as, as, an, as a data modeling optimization. Um, I'm, I'm sure that we will, and we'll, we'll need to kind of cross that bridge when we come to it. We're out of time. OK. Thanks, uh, Jason. All right. <laughs> Thanks a lot, everybody. Hope you have a yeah, good rest of your time. To next, uh, next speaker, and uh, or to get to your next room. You guys got a lot.